Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen, Carlos Balasquide, and life coach Linda Armstrong here. It's Friday, December the 21st, 2018, 4 p.m. New York time, 1 p.m. in Los Angeles, 9 p.m. in London, and 8 a.m. in Sydney, Australia, and wherever you are in the world. Thank you for joining us for yet another edition of LOA Today. Uh, your daily dose of happy, and uh, I'm really happy to see Linda was able to duck in at the last second. So, hi there, Linda. How you doing? Glad you could make it with us today. Oh, can we can we uh, hear you? Oh, I just unmuting myself. Oh, there you are. Okay. Can you good. hear me? Okay. Yep, you're good. Let me ask you: Do I have that buzzing behind my voice? No, no. That that uh, okay, sound we had last time. Hopefully, that's not going to happen again. If it happens, we'll try to deal with it. But um, you know. Whatever source energy was trying to send us a message, maybe they'll do it more quietly this time. <laughs> you know what? It's been happening. It's been happening all week. Really? I'll start out like just talking like this. I'm fine. I start running energy, and then the thing goes crazy. <laughs> so I wow. Know. Okay. Well, I got to figure out. Maybe you should switch to DC or, or AC. I don't know. Which, which <laughs> I don't know. I tried playing with the gain, like there's that dial you can do on your mic. Right. And uh, uh-huh. so we'll see what happens. The only thing I can think is, well, no, I'm not going to invite trouble, so forget that. Ignore that that train <laughs> of thought that I just stopped. <laughs> oh, I want to get the uh, recording. Thing. We haven't got the video recording going, so let's get that on. Recording has started. There we go. Okay. So, yes, we are doing a Q&A today, but it's also a Q&A about the holidays, uh, because the holidays can be both an exciting time and a fun time, but they can also be a stressful time for lots of different people. Um, for instance, uh, single people often find it to be a little bit stressful just because they don't have that special someone to be with. Uh, people who have families that are large or small, but maybe there's some sort of tensions that go on when the families get together, you know, fights about who's going to watch what football game, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, stuff comes up during the holidays, and, and it is widely reported to be the most stressful time of the year for many people. For some people, it's just, oh, my God, we got a few days left. We haven't got the tree up. We haven't got all the gifts wrapped yet. We're trying to take care of the kids, you know, whatever it might be. You know, lots of things getting in the way. And, uh, Linda, I imagine your business kind of picks up around this time of year, which is good for you, but it is, it's a, it's a high-stress time, isn't it? It's a high-stress time, yeah. Yeah. On the other hand... It doesn't have to be, though. No. Really, because... You know, that's again, again, that's kind of a choice because really the energies around the holidays are a very high vibration overall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I was on, um, I was on a kind of a, a holiday gathering where a bunch of healers came together and gave healing to all those that signed up for it. Mm-hmm. And one of the women there was talking about, you know, the um, levels of consciousness, Dr. Hawkins' work. Okay. And uh, really, the holidays calibrate really high. So it's a good time to catch the wave of this high vibration. Because, yes, people are coming together. People are sharing. People are having feeling gratitude for, you know, like from Thanksgiving all the way through to New Year. Mm-hmm. So there's more of the real high vibe out there that we uh. can all latch on to than these lower energies. And those lower energies, well, they can, they're easy they're easy to let go of. You just have to decide to let go. <laughs> well, they, it's easy to say so when you're in the high vibration. When you're in the lower vibration, sometimes it seems pretty hard to let go of them. But I get your point. Cause... Yeah, but there, but there's help out there for you. It can be done, and it's not that hard to do. So what's the first step I'll for something? Let... Well, right, no. <laughs> well, all right. No, that's good. Well, you've thrown the gauntlet down, so I'm going to pick it up. And I'm going to say, all right, so for somebody who's in that kind of darker place right now, what's their first step for turning it around? Well, I would say look at not what is and start looking at what it is that you want. Where do you want to be? Where do you want to go? If you're feeling unloved, well, start start bringing love into yourself. It starts an internal job. It starts with you first. Mm-hmm. You know, if you've got these issues with other family people, just see that things, a lot of this is all outside of you. You can't control everybody else, but you can. you are the master of your domain. You know, you're the one who... Anything out there that's a reflection that's going on that is not what you want, there's something within that you can change. But you have to decide to do it. I mean, some people, I hate to say it, they're happy being in their misery. Yes. Or they would actually really do something about it. And that sounds harsh, but that's true. Because we all have the power to make a change and to to change the circumstances in our life. And it all starts with... Feeling what it is you want. You know, the feeling is the prayer, right? This is true. 
Very true. Yeah. And, that, yeah. and there, there's a there's a very non stress guy over there. I mean, this guy is like the ultimate in non stress. So I'm curious to know <laughs> how do you handle it and, and what what do you tell people, Carlos? But go ahead with what you were going to say. Yeah, no, I was going to say it's all about. I would start with gratitude because I think that's what um, what grounds us in a time where it's stressful and it's like because there's a lot of things that don't matter that for some reason the holidays will enhance. You know, like. Um, you know, gift giving and th- this, which, you know, are important, but at the end of the day, they're not, it, it doesn't matter. You know, your family is your family, you know, um, yeah, I just, I would, I would just kind of focus on the things that uh, you're grateful for. You know, mm-hmm. if, if you're going over to your family's house and they're a pain in the butt, you know, maybe that they're healthy, you know, and that, you guys get to you get to see your you know nieces and nephews or whatever it is that there's 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 a silver lining in everything right and so I think just during the holidays we can turn because of the stress we can turn and see all the negative and everything oh I don't I have to go do this or I have to go shopping or I have to <laughs> you know and and, and though that's a, that's a bad energy to like kind of come from so yeah. instead um you know come from all the things that you get to do oh I get to see you know, my family I haven't seen in a long time. Oh, I get to, um, you know, get a couple of days off work or whatever it is. You know, it's like kind of look at it uh, for what you're receiving or, or what uh, you're grateful for rather than, uh, you know, all the negatives. Because the negatives aren't going to go anywhere. <laughs> anywhere that you got to go through them, whatever they are. Uh, but, you know, focusing on them isn't going to make them any better. You know, I would just, you know, really focus on, on the stuff that, that makes you happy. Yeah, and all true. of that that you were just mentioning is just stuff that takes you outside of yourself. Mm-hmm. It's you giving up your power to all of this chaos, and it doesn't have to be. You can always sit and breathe, ground yourself. I mean, here it's cold. I don't really want to go out in the rain today and hug a tree, you know. <laughs> <But> <laughs> Louise was asking me if I want to go yourself. get the mail, and the mail is like a, an eighth of a mile away in the rain. I said, no, I think I'll wait till tomorrow morning. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but you know what? Even standing out there in the rain, well, that's grounding because you're out in, in the elements, in nature, right? Mm. So you want to – because if, you, if you're too scattered into all of the things you have to do, you are not grounded. Mm. You're not. You're coming outside of yourself, and you're, you're actually leaking your power. So you want to come back in. You can do it just with your breath. You can imagine you're growing roots out of your feet going all the way down. I don't care if you're on the top story of a building. You're sending those roots all the way down into the earth. It's all it's all visualization and imagination. And just allow yourself to sit for a minute. Forget about the to-do list because when you can get grounded and return back to you, all that stuff is easier to get done. It just gets done so much easier because mm. you're letting go of the struggle of this idea of having to get all this stuff done. Yeah. <laughs> right? And that's it. It's, it's it's the idea that 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 gets us down. It isn't so much, well, usually not not always, but usually it's not the events itself themselves that are getting us down. It's what we're thinking about the events and what we're. Uh, it's anticipating. all that energy attached to yeah. it. It's all energy attachments. Yeah. yeah, and and what you're thinking. And it's nice to know we have the opportunity to choose a different thought. It may not seem easy, but we do have that opportunity at all times. And. Uh, Deidre actually just posted something that uh, she wanted to share. She said, I just posted a comment about this very thing, Linda, when someone asked if it was selfish to want wealth, success, and happiness for oneself. Walt replied beautifully. Yeah, I replied to that one. <laughs> but I mentioned that some people are content with what is and do nothing to change. And it's true. Well, if they're content, then that's fine. That's their world. We all, ha- we all create what we want. Mm-hmm. Well, you know I, what I mean? I, I but you're people, not going to let those yeah. people who want to judge you wanting more to, to interfere. Because, again, it's out. It's giving your power outside to somebody else. Yes, exactly. Right. But I never judge someone who's not reaching for more if they're happy where they are. You know, mm-hmm. you're all entitled to be where you're at. Yeah. But selfishness is such a is such a outward thing anyways, right? Because it's like, you know, you, you think about... Uh, you know, you talk about the virtue of selfishness or something like that to where it's like, yeah, is it selfish because you want it for you? Maybe, but does that, does that stop there? Like, you know, is that, what are you going to do? It's, it's not selfish, I don't think, until you choose what to do with all that, you know, success and wealth and all that other stuff, right? Is, are you 
you know, you want it just to have it so that nobody else can have it? I mean, or is it, you know, I'm sure that, you know, with that, you know, you'll, uh, it'll kind of, it can, it can kind of bring, um, you know, giving and, and other things that you might not have the opportunity to have without that stuff too. So I think that we, uh, to Linda's point, we always get stuck on what everybody else thinks. And I think especially on the holidays, it's, you know, very cumbersome. So I just want to remind everybody, you don't have to do anything, right? Like as long as you're, you know, you're safe and you're, you're not in danger, you don't have to do anything. Like, well, I have to go to the mall. You don't have to do that. You're choosing to do that because you know, but again, like if, if you simplify everything, there's a lot of stuff that you don't have to do that you end up doing because of, you know, other, all these other factors. Um, so just know that, you know, you have, you have the power. Like if you want to stay home and you don't want to put up any decorations, and that's, a, yes, your prerogative. You can do that. You know, people will judge you, but that's only outside. That's not, it has nothing to do with your well being or with your, you know, um, yeah, you're gonna be fine. You know, it's something that's gonna happen. <laughs> I love it. You <laughs> you'll be fine. You're gonna survive. You'll make it to January. You know, hopefully, yeah, you know, if all you know, if all goes well. But uh, yeah, the, don't get bogged down by all, all that stuff. Is just what everybody else expects of you. Um, yeah, that, so that's you know, yeah, very, very simple. Can I add to that that word selfish? Mm. You know what? Selfish is a good thing. It very much is. Let's change that definition and not look at selfish as only being like hoarding everything for you and you're not going to share. I mean, you're going to have a really lonely world if that's how you are, right? Right. But right. selfish in the best way is really feeding yourself, feeling your, feeding your soul and the things that you want. Because as you do that, guess what? That ripples out and you're able to feed all those other people if you want to look at it that way, right? Absolutely. You're feeding them the energy to empower themselves to take care of themselves and to be selfish in the very best way for right. themselves. Yeah. Let's let's like ripple out selfishness in the highest level of taking care of self. Exactly. Not in a like Carlos was explaining that kind of like um selfish hoarding kind of a thing, right? I mean, but right. that's how it's been put to us. Yeah. You know, that right. and that's and all part selfish. of the evil making the, the rich be evil, you know? <laughs> yeah. Rich people help people. I want to, you know, yeah. I'm going for that. Right. Yeah, no, I think selfishness, too, is an out, outside per, per, uh, perception, you know. It's never going to be selfish to you, right? Like, again, that's only, that's self, worrying about if it's selfish, you wouldn't think it's selfish. You know, so you're going to enjoy having what you Whoops. Uh-oh, did we lose? You, it's worried, lost. it's being worried about... Am I am I not here? I, I think no, I, hear you. I think your connection went out for a moment. Yeah, I'm just I was I was making the point that yeah, it's selfishness is just a perception from outside. It has nothing to do with with you. You're gonna feel fine about it. It's just that's again how others perceive what you want or the way that you're acting. You know. And I guess agree. what? God, the universe, wants you to have everything you want. Yes. I and mean, that's mm -hmm. what it's there for. Exactly. Exactly right. Yeah. Um, Deidre made reference to, to the post that I. Uh, the, the comment that I refer, referred to on that post that I that I replied with, um, I quoted Abraham Hicks, who are very eloquent on the idea that selfishness is good, and they make a really strong point. Um, I can go look up the quote exactly, but what it amounts to is, if you look at the idea of getting yourself into a happy place, into a good feeling place, that is a quintessentially selfish act. You can't have somebody else get you into that happy place. You're the only one who can do mm -hmm. that. And as long as that's the case, and as long as it also is the case that you really don't have anything to give to anybody else unless you're in that happy place, then you have to be selfish in order to give to somebody else. And turning it around to the other side of it, people who point their fingers and say you're selfish, inevitably, every single time, are doing that from a not happy place. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it. There's no point if you're feeling right. good. If you're feeling good, you say, ah, who cares? If they're feeling bad, they're saying, oh, I gotta get that energy. You're being selfish. You're, you're, you're the one who's the cause of all my unhappiness. Well, you know, right, it's crazy. They're in the energy of lack. <laughs> exactly. So if they're in the energy of lack, they can't see where the, you know, they can't see the good. Yeah. But we want to get them out of the lack. So that's why we need to be more selfish so we can somehow that's right. help those people to rise up out of, you know, where they are. Mm hmm. Yeah. 
I, I, I always like, I love the way you started that, Linda, by the way, the, the, the first comment that you made when you said selfishness is a good thing, because I agree. I've, I've felt that for the longest mm-hmm. time. And I, I, I think it's an important thing to keep repeating as loudly and as long as we can, because I think we kind of need to counter that other mentality. That, that other mentality is really not a healthy one at all. It's actually very unhealthy. Mm-hmm. You know what takes away the question? Are you being selfish through the energy of love or not? Mm. How can you be, how can it be bad if you're being selfish through this energy of love, which is a very high vibration? Right. And that's what I'm all about, teaching, helping people to yeah. live from Absolutely. love. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Were you going to say something, Carlos? Yeah, I was going to say that, um, just, I mean, not to beat a dead horse, but the, uh, don't feel selfish for wanting. I think um, when it turns selfish in a bad way is the, the lack of giving, right? You can want and want and want and want, but when you are that hoarder of your gifts or of, you know, things that you can and are able to kind of give to others and like, that's where to me the, but again, I never, I agree with you. I've never felt selfish as a negative for wanting, you know, wanting could never, you know, for yourself, uh, be bad. I think that's, you know, we all, um, innately feel that, uh, from money to just bettering ourselves in general. And I think that the things that we want kind of go towards that, uh, mentality, but yeah, I think I'm thinking like, you know, where we get, where, uh, that's where I got this idea from. I said, where do we get this negative? Like, <laughs> and I, you know, just breaking it down. Yeah, it's just in that when we see people with a lot that, that are, you know, that don't give. And I feel like that's, um, you know, really, and again, who, how much you give and what you give, that's, you know, very uh, individual thing. But, um, yeah, I think that's where, that's the only negative connotation of that word that I would, uh, that I would really see. Mm-hmm. And again, that's perception, because how do you know they don't give? Maybe they don't want you to know how much they give. <laughs> I mean, very true. You know? Yeah, that's very true. There are a lot of very wealthy people who give regularly, but they definitely don't want to be prominent about it. They they don't want to. They're not looking for the praise. They're just doing it from the heart, right? right? They actually prefer to do it quietly. They 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 would prefer that nobody really knows what they're doing because it's private. It's just their thing that they're doing. They're not doing it for publicity. Yeah, but I'm I'm not talking about those. I'm obviously not talking about those people. I'm talking about people that actually don't give. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. No, sure no, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's people, you know, I'm sure that not everybody that has gives, but, um, yeah. I mean, obviously, I don't want to, you know, put down people that give in, in silence because that's something that I do. I, I also believe in that, and I don't want to, uh, you know, you, you don't necessarily want praise. You just want to do it and exactly. you know, yeah. be done with it. Right? And that's the healthy thing. And I do want to remind people, I'm seeing a lot more uh, people coming into the room, finding the conversation, a couple new people. That's great. Um, but this is also a Q&A. And so we invite you, if you are listening to the live stream of this, uh, to participate. Put it in the comments section of any questions that you might have that you want us to address, topics that you want us to look at, um, just comments you want to make about what we're talking about. We try to share them during the podcast. But feel free to include your comments. One person actually... Uh, specified where she was from. She's from Ireland, so we have an Irish listener uh, tuning in this time. That's great. Yeah, fabulous. So, just wanted to mention that. Make sure we're we're touching on that. Um, so let's I get back. What time it is in Ireland. <laughs> you, you wonder what? How about the? Uh, I said I wonder what time it is in Ireland. <laughs> in Ireland, well, Ireland is UK. Uh, it's probably close right. to London time. I'm not sure if it's the same time zone or not. Good question. I don't know. <laughs> time to do a Google have search. Have to type it in. <laughs> yeah, uh, Aisling, if, what, what time is it uh, where you are right now? That'll tell us. If, if it's 1 p.m. or thereabouts, just after 1 p.m., 1.20, I guess, then you're in the same time zone as London. But if not, then we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's see. The, well, the holiday is coming up. Christmas is coming on Tuesday. And I haven't asked this question of anybody yet on the podcast, so I'm going to ask you guys. You got your Christmas shopping done yet? Um, uh, <laughs> my Christmas shopping is usually these days putting money into envelopes because, um, like the kids I would be giving money gifts to, it's so hard to figure out what they might want. I'd rather give them money, let them get what they want to get. That, that's a good attitude. Yeah. I like that. That's, that's nice. Yeah. 
I uh, I was gonna say, Walt, when I, this reminded me of what you were saying earlier. I was gonna comment, but um, go ahead. You had mentioned that it was stressful to not have somebody during the holidays. Well, I would I would counter that and say sometimes it's more, <laughs> it can be more stressful. So being single during the holidays is is you know. Pretty good with me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's not having to worry about whether they like the things or whose house we have to go to for this and whose house are we going to for that. And, oh, you know, my mother now, she's, her feelings are hurt because we didn't go over there for Thanksgiving. You know? So for me, it's just like, you know, it's a little bit, a little bit nicer. Uh, to, yeah, more, more, uh, peaceful for me during the holidays being single. But again, that's not, that's not, you know, everybody. But, uh, <laughs> oh, that's fine. Uh, in that, on that note, uh, yeah, I didn't have to do too much shopping, so, um, which is also, you know, try to keep it stress free over here in sunny yeah. California. <laughs> Good plan. We, we talked before about sometimes people get caught up in the energies of stuff that could be going on in families. Now you got to go see that person because they're all going to so and so's house and like all of that kind of. That element that comes sometimes around the holidays for people, well, I pulled a card, and this card actually is really good. I think it, it'll speak to that, or to speak to the whole entire time right now. But it's um, cool. Dear Spirit. Where's my – there I am. I can see it, right? Bambi. So it says, uh, bring a gentle touch. So this is all about the time has come to be gentle and diplomatic when dealing with others. Hee, hee, hee. Perfect, right? <laughs> um, yeah. You might have found yourself in a situation where negotiations are necessary in order to reach your goal. Be mindful of the words you choose, but do not worry. Dear Spirit reminds you that you have the ability to be sure-footed and confident while showing humility and respect for others. That's speaking to really staying in your zone, like being not being pulled out by whatever's going on around you. Um, it says that uh, you'll find... That your capacity for calm and grounded communication is heightened at this time. Yeah. So if you're going through that kind of thing, you need this right now, right? Mm. That, so it's there for you. This energy is there for you to tap into. Um, it says, follow the way of dear spirit and you will do well. Gaining the respect of others and finding common ground that is pleasing to you. Remember that understanding others and their needs will be more powerful at this time than putting your your own first. Okay, maybe we speak a little to that selfishness. I don't know. It says <laughs> if you do that, you'll be rewarded tenfold. Ah. Okay, okay, so it's really it's really being in that gentle space, accepting people for who they are, how they are, not trying to fix them, and not trying to prove yourself to anyone, and just trusting that you can have this balance and this harmony no matter what situation you might be thrown into over these next, like, two weeks. <laughs> and, uh, Trust that you have the support, right? So if you feel yourself, so maybe if you're watching this and you feel, you know, now you're at this family gathering and you're feeling this energy building up because you don't like the way that one looked at you or what they just said or whatever it is, right? Right. Remember this deer is with you. Tap into it. Say, okay, that girl Linda, she's a little out of there, but you know what? I'm going to go with the deer I'm going to go with the deer spirit right now because deer spirit feels better than the words I want to start shouting at that person over there. You know, like let it keep you in your space, in your zone. You know, yeah. breathe around. Nobody has to know what you're doing. You're standing there. Everybody's talking. You know, I got to put my roots down because I'm about to fly off the handle. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, I like I like the uh, the frame of the, or the I call it uh, minding your own business. You know, so mm -hmm. like don't try to control other people. And you'll have the best life. You, your life will be uh, so much happier, you know, <laughs> because I think a lot of times, yeah, we get into these social situations and, oh, so-and-so is late and this person did that. And, you know, just just if you really concentrate on, on even maybe that's selfish, you know, if you just concentrate on you and the things that you can control, not trying to control Aunt, you know, Linda, who, you know, is doing that that you don't like, oh, let her, that's it. Let her do what she needs to do. That's a, don't let it affect you. You know what I mean? Like, hey, she, if she's, if, uh, you know, your cousin's being loud and you hate when they're so loud and, you know, step outside. Go give yourself, you know, go get some, some fresh air or like, you know, go talk to your, your another aunt or uncle that you like. You know, there's, there's choices that we make, but I think that, yeah, when, when we 
are really so focused on everyone else, that's that's really where a lot of the stress comes from. You know, um, just kind of you know stay uh, like Linda say, stay grounded and stay in, like inside yourself. Don't don't you know? And there's a lot of traps out there. You know, but. You know what else you could do? And we might have talked about this before. Have I talked about, you know, creating a bubble around you and putting the chain mail around it? We have Have mentioned that. Have I talked about that with you two guys? You and I talked about it. (laughs) Yeah, you can. So so you're in that situation and you feel yourself being pulled out. So you want to set your boundaries, right? And you're going to just imagine, and you can do this with eyes open, just looking at people, but you're just imagining that you're just calling in this beautiful support and this love and this light and you're building this bubble around you. And you're putting your chain mail around there. So only the good stuff comes through. You're not going to be pulled out into someone else's stuff. And you're not going to take on theirs either. So you just kind of feel supported in your own energy. You know? And um, right. that that could, that's, that's really all you need. Because if everything is truly a reflection outside of you, you want to fix that energy within you that's starting to get riled up. And be like, okay, this is just something triggered within me. I choose to send that emotion a little bit of love we'll pull in a little bit more and we make my bubble a little bigger <laughs> put that chain mail out there you know <laughs> um that protective barrier so there's mm-hmm. a lot of things you can do you know it, it just be creative because we are creative manifestors right so mm-hmm. we we create everything that shows up for us so if some mm-hmm. stuff we don't like is showing up just go within breathe like okay i don't like that stuff but you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna allow it to affect me right now i'm gonna stay with the love i'll deal with that right. later <laughs> absolutely right? and we've got some comments from uh, listeners that that are mirroring what we're talking about here um colleen made a few comments that, including well first on the question of of uh, whether she got the christmas shopping done she says she still has to shop and wrap the presents and she really wants it to be the best christmas ever but she wants it to be not with gifts but with love tying in exactly to what you just talked about right there so she's focused more on the love yeah. than she has on the presence, which is very cool. And she also right. says that uh, it's also good to be grateful because not everyone has a family to celebrate holidays with, which is also a very good point. Right. Yeah. That's right. Um, Deidre, on the topic of uh, of gifts and, and uh, you know, where she's going for the holidays, says she's done with her. She's really happy. She's got her uh, gift giving gift uh, shopping done. Um, she said she only had to buy things for, for the children she raised. And... Uh, She's looking forward to driving down from Michigan to Illinois to visit them on Christmas Day. So she's all excited, which is great. Um, we have questions for you, Linda, from Bronwyn and Aisling. Aisling, uh, first of all, she confirmed that Ireland and London are in the same time zone. So currently at, uh, about 930 there in, in Ireland. And uh, she asked, could you please pull a card for me, if you don't mind? Okay. That's something you could uh, do. Just a general card? Uh, that's all that she specified, so I guess yes. Nothing in particular? No. Nope. Okay. So I'll go to the angel deck. We'll see what the angels want to tell you. Okay. What's her name again? This is Aisling, A-I-S-L-I-N-G. Okay, so we'll just pull a card for Aisling. What do the angels want Aisling to know? Let's we'll see what comes up. Okay. Shower of Abundance. That's a good one. A good one. Mm, are you sure? It doesn't seem like that. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know. Let me think about it. <laughs> you can't even get. I don't know, you know, it can only hail of abundance. I think. It's be <laughs> the only better one than that. Yeah. So Southern California right. has been heard from. <laughs> are you ready? All right. So shower of abundance is to hear your financial situation. First, give us your your worries concerning money. We can guide you in order to show, show you how to be and explain the details. Put together your financial situation with the deal as fast as you allow it. You're, 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 you're getting, getting the first take over and start to take over. I'm telling you. Yeah. Oh, my God. That is a bad disconnect. That's kind of- that's kind of creepy, it's actually. pretty bad. <laughs> you know, what, remember what when we were testing last week? What worked for you was to, to log out and log back in. You should try reconnecting and see if it clears up. I'll do that. I'll, I'm just, I'll just. It's bad, right? I have to. I have to. Dis- I have to. Try, yeah, try, try, try to disconnect and see if that works. Because that worked. That worked when right. we were testing it. So I disconnect. How is it now? Oh, much better. Okay, but usually because now it's my computer mic, I have to talk really loud. But you let me know if you can't hear me. Okay. Okay. That's the abundance card. Yep. 
And, and isn't that really cool? I mean, I don't know what to do about that. But <laughs> I don't know. It's my work. <laughs> yeah. I got to add it to take a little bit. That's right, yeah. <laughs> What's that, Carl? Yeah, so start from the beginning. We didn't hear. Okay, I'll start from the beginning. It started, okay. Yeah, it started from the beginning. Okay, so to heal your financial situation, first give us your worries concerning money. We will guide you in order to show you how to create and accept abundance. As we work together, your financial situation will heal as fast as you allow. This card is not that your prayers about finances have been heard and answered. The more you can listen to and follow your gut feelings... Right now, the quicker you'll experience improvements in your financial situation. So then it gives these possible um, ways to interpret the card. So it says, the coins that you're finding lately are loving signs from your angels and a departed loved one. So if you're, if you're finding like coins and things showing up, just think it's, it's an angel sign, right? Or it's someone who's in spirit letting you know that they're still around. An unexpected financial windfall is coming to you. Give any financial fears to your angels. Follow any guidance you receive as it could be an answered prayer about your finances. It says abundance can take many forms, including having more time, opportunities, or clear ideas. Very good. All right. We actually have a couple more requests for for cards, but before we get to them, Bronwyn had a question that uh, we wanted you to address. She says, do you like the full moon coming tonight? Sure. <laughs> it's supposed to be like it's supposed to be the longest night, right? Well, it's I, winter solstice. I, I'm not. I don't know a lot about astrology, so I can't go there and speak to these different things from anything um, more than what I feel. Um, I, 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 I just like to go with the energies as they come. You know, there's a whole bunch of eclipses that are supposed to be coming on. I think in uh, especially in January. Like a lot of big shifting going on, but it's a good thing because we're all shedding out the old stuff and being, you know, bringing in the new. Perfect, right? New year, especially all this holiday energy. It's like perfect time for all of that, right? Because we're bringing in something new. And, you know, some of this stuff that might come up that maybe puts you in the lower energy, just kind of look at it like, okay, this energy, I'm letting go of this energy. That's like the old me. I want to step into the new. Okay, so I don't know where that's going, but um, what's but, next? <laughs> that's all right. Well, we have two more people who have asked for you to pull cards for them. Uh, Colleen and Deidre are both interested in having you pull cards. And Deidre also wants you to pull a card for Nasha. That's, that's actually three cards. Okay. So who's the first one, Colleen? Colleen's the first one, right. All right, I'm going to pull from the Spirit Animal Oracle for Colleen. Okay. Just because that's what was on me. The reason I've got it, why not? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go with it. This is the card, and it is Groundhog Spirit upside down. And this card says, Time to let go. Ah. Okay, so let me find this one. Reverse position number 31 is going to tell us. Oops, Carlos fell. (laughs) (laughs) I hope he didn't get hurt. (laughs) Carlos fell. All right, time to go. No, stick around a little bit more, Carlos. (laughs) All right, so here's the message. Have you been relentless in your efforts to receive something that has passed its prime and needs to die away? Ooh, we're just talking about letting go and purging stuff for the new to come in, weren't we? Right, absolutely. Um, so it says, uh, okay, something something that has passed its prime and needs to die, a situation, a relationship, a belief, or a habit that served you once but no longer fills you with vitality. Perhaps you automatically expect to see the world through a specific lens based on the familiar. Groundhog Spirit has appeared to let you know it's time to accept that the past is the past. So allow yourself to feel the loss and the grief, uh, uh, to, to feel the loss and grieve it if you need to. Any sadness will not last forever or overwhelm you. Knowing Spirit is with you, and wants you to experience joy and excitement again will help you through this transition from the old to the new. 
Keep your eyes open, for winter always gives way to the spring, and endings always give birth to new beginnings. For now, let yourself feel your emotions, releasing them to make way for the joy that awaits you. Spring and new growth are on their way, for that is Spirit's promise to you. So isn't it perfect how that card was pulled after we were, I was just talking about the energies of releasing the old and coming into the new? Absolutely. Yeah, well, you can't I make mean... this stuff up, I'm telling you. <laughs> Well, plus anything, anytime that you're talking about letting go of stuff, that's always a good topic because it's something that we all need to practice anyway. But in this case, it sounds like it had a, a very particular purpose. So that was good. That was good. Maybe she can put in the chat if she knows what that's speaking to. You know? Yeah, sure. Um, and yeah. actually, we only have one other person who needs a card. Deirdre wants, wants a card. Uh, apparently, I'd forgotten this, but she reminded me that you pulled a card for Nasha last week. And she's reporting that it did a powerful world of good for Nasha. So... She was very excited okay. about that. But see what see what you have for Deidre. Okay. Well, let's see which deck wants me to. I'm going to animals again. Animals? Okay. The poem. Yeah. All right. Oh, in, in answer to your question from Colleen, uh, she says she, this is something she's been working on. She's ready for new beginnings, and she says thank you. So. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. What do we have for Deidre? Ooh, White Raven Spirit. Can we see it? Yep. Mm -hmm. It says, trust in the magic. Woo! I love <laughs> trusting the magic. That excites me, babe. All right. Number 66. Right side up. All right. So the White Raven Spirit, trust in magic, it says nothing in the universe is random. For the intricate web of co-creation weaves together all events and has done so since the beginning of time. Coincidences have meaning and White Raven Spirit appears to remind you to pay attention to these synchronicities so that you might recognize patterns. Even the winds dance in a pattern, participating in the magic of Spirit's plan for all. Align with the highest good and intentions, and you will come to see that White Raven is guiding you, an ally to you, and a messenger from spirit. Align with the light, and you will start to recognize that all is working together harmoniously in ways that the eye cannot always see, and the mind cannot always comprehend. This is magic, right? Mm -hmm. So the universe is conspiring on your behalf right now drawing you to the light and bringing you the magic and miracles that are your birthright. Now is the time to trust in magic of the world um, that is everywhere and in all things. Pay attention to how things come together as if by magic and you will see the, you will see the hand of a great spirit arranging things in your favor. So yeah, that, that I think we can all take that card in, but I'd like to see if it has any particular meaning uh, for her. Okay, so Deidre, if you can uh, let us know if it has particular meaning, that would be great. Bronwyn's also asking for a card, too. So can you do one for her, for Bronwyn? Okay. Cards so are popular Angel today. Are yeah. Angels are calling me. All right, so Bronwyn. Let's see what we can tell Bronwyn. What do the angels want to tell Bronwyn? I kind of take in all these cards just because I feel like, yeah. I don't know if this is... You know what? The cards will always speak to a, to the group. Whoever's actually, I mean, people looking at this later, there'll be something within each card. And sometimes you don't see it, but then it comes to you. Mm -hmm. for, because yeah. energy is energy. Or like attracts like. Yeah. There's got to be a reason why. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. also seeing these cards. So. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I, I have meditation groups and I'll pull cards. They'll, they'll get like three cards each and we'll go through the reading. And they know well enough by now. They're like, that's my card. That's my card. You know, like back and forth, everybody's sharing cards because, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a group of energy all come together. By the way, before okay, you so do, be, be, before you do Brownwood's card, Deidre says, yay, thank you, Linda. She says it does make sense in her life. So you, you hit the right mark. Okay. All right, good. Not me. It's angels. It's it's <laughs> okay. So family. And, you know, this is the time of year where you, we might pull a card like this it says this situation is rooted in an emotional experience with a family member which we can help you to understand and heal 
in your mind and heart surround this person yourself and the experience with calming blue light and many angels be open to the gifts within the situation and allow yourself to feel peace this card means that the question you asked about is relating to a family issue it could be that some healing work is needed concerning one particular family member and it's the first one that pops in your head as we as you listen to this card or this card might signal a need for more family togetherness such as spending an evening or a holiday together your angels will guide you through this passage so there's possible meanings for this card are a new addition to your family is entering you have friends who are like second family to you it's time to face old feelings so that they can be released and cleared uh, release an unwanted pattern pattern um, by forgiving one or more family members including yourself so yeah forgiveness um okay all right so let us know brown when that uh, matches up or how it matches up deidre has more information she says uh her card had big meaning for her just like last week's card for nasha had huge, huge meaning for her so you 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 not you the the angels hit the mark they hit it perfectly <laughs> And, all that is. and one more request. Fenny is asking for a card. F-E-N-I. Fenny is asking for a card. So can you draw a card for Fenny? All right. We're going back to the animals. Animals, here we come. We just go where I'm guided. Maybe we're... Oh, 444. Four, four. Oh, good number. You want to look that one up? <laughs> That's the time, at least on my computer, as we're going to pull this card right now. So I'll just split... Take a card, yeah, take a look. A lot of numerical signs lately, too, actually, Linda. That's funny. Yeah. That. No, have you been looking up the numbers? Well, they're all the same. It's, it's usually, yeah, it's all 111 or versions of that. Okay. And, uh, and, and threes. There, there's, um, there's a website. I think it's called sacredscribes.com, or if you just search that, you, and they have, like, the numbers, like, 129999 or something. like. Yeah. Yeah, no, no I, I've, I've been looking. Up, I've been looking them up for sure. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll speak to you. So, starfish yeah. spirit in the upright position, and it says, "Open to infinite possibilities." Ooh, ooh, I love that. I, I'm gonna own it already. I didn't even read it yet. <laughs> okay, so that's number fifty-nine, and that one's telling us. All right, so it says, stretched out on the beach, the starfish opens fully to the rays of the sun to the power of potential. As you look outward to the horizon, do you open up to the infinite possibilities? Question, do you? Uh, spirit is the source of opportunities beyond your wildest imagination and ensures endless possibilities are available. This goes right along with the magic card, right? At this time, starfish spirit urges you to stretch past the limits of your everyday perception and comfort zone to dream of bigger things and imagine with even greater hope and faith for miraculous potential is shining down on you. Feel it, bask in it, and open yourself to be filled with inspiration. This is a very fortunate sign. The, star the starfish spirit has come to remind you of your infinite potential. And thank you, because that's going to remind all of us. Mm. And uh, Carlos just yawned, right? So yawning is release of energy. So if this card mm -hmm. could be bringing up something for you that is allowing you to release it, so you're open, that starfish on the beach, you know, allowing all that good no, stuff think, to come in. I was definitely thinking about it when you were, when you were saying it. It's definitely something that I speaks to me for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, Bronwyn, um, Bronwyn yeah, replied really to her cool. card. Bronwyn said that uh, regarding her card, wow, that was great. It couldn't be a couple of meanings for sure. Thank you so much, Linda. You're great. So, yeah, you're oh, great, by you. the way. <laughs> thank you. I love you guys. It's all about yeah, love and energy and getting group. in that high vibe, right? We, we love it. Oh, and Fanny wants to let us know that uh, she's listening from New Zealand. So another person from oh. down under, thank you so much for tuning in. That's really fabulous. Yes. That's fun. Yeah. Um, all right. So I think let's just talk some more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But Well, thanks for drawing all those cards for everybody who was asking. And thanks for everybody who asked. That was terrific. You're welcome. Yeah. But you know what? Let me just, let me just add this. Guys, 
Get your own decks. You can do this for yourself all day long. You have a question. Find some. I mean, this. I'm loving this this deck. I'm loving this deck. Colette Baron. Animal, yeah, that's the animal one I like. Yeah. Spirit Animal Oracle. And this is like my go-to, if non-specific, pick a card at any moment deck. All right? Daily Guidance from the Angels. But there's so many of them. I've got like 40 of them. You can always get, if you're, if you're like getting stuck in your head and you can't figure stuff out, let yourself get pulled away. Start shuffling some cards and do a spread. Okay. Is, is there a good like, go-to you know, place some, to find cards? I mean, where, where do you find your cards? You can go to Amazon and, and just search Oracle cards and get like a whole list of them. You can get these on your phone. I have like, I don't know, a whole bunch of decks on my phone. I'll show you. Like, look, that's just one page. Of decks. Of, of decks. Wow. Decks of cards. Now, so here's the angel guidance, right? This is the one I was just telling you about. Mm-hmm. So I might as well. I should I should become a salesperson for these. You guys. should. Okay, yeah. look. <laughs> you see this? Begin a reading. So we'll do a simple reading, right? Okay. This is right on your phone. You're standing on line. You're bored somewhere. Start flipping cards. Okay. Look. You just flip. Okay, see, I like to let the card just come by itself like that. Like, I didn't stop my finger. It just stopped, and this card came up. So let's see what it is. Okay. Entrepreneur. Woo! Oh, All nice. All those people want to start a business out there, go for it. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you want me to read that one or... Sure, yeah. Finish it off. All right. I mean, it, it, it just... So the thing is, like, my, my husband, when he's playing with these decks... He just likes to go, wherever it stops, it stops. But me, I like to go around and flip the cards until it stops on its own. That's how I like to do it. So we got this entrepreneur. And what it says is, self-employment suits your disposition and intentions. Working for yourself allows you to better follow your intuition and divine guidance. We are your coworkers and teammates who remain loyally by your side to ensure your success in all ways. Now, Carlos, you keep coming up in my mind here, so I don't know. Yeah. This could be for you. So, yeah. And then it goes on to say, this card comes to you because you're well-suited to self-employment. You have the ideas, the drive, and the self-discipline required for entrepreneurial work, yet self-doubts make you, self-doubts make you hesitate. The angels reassure you that you have what it takes to succeed as an entrepreneur. They will guide you and support you along the way as long as you follow through on the action your success is assured, and you've been paying attention to the numbers, right? So they're talking to you, if, the, if this is yeah. for Carlos. But I'm sure yeah, everybody yeah. else can, it can speak to many people. But it says your ideas for a business are sound. Ease out of your present job by moonlighting or uh, or your with your desired business ideas. Like for those who aren't really quite sure yet, you can ease your way through it. Take action as you're guided with respect to your career, because forced action makes everything take longer. You want to try and be in that space where it can flow and fully commit to succeeding in your business. It's like there's no failure here, right? We're going for it. I, I'm a co-creator right. with the universe, so I can have whatever I want. Very good. Uh, a couple of com- comments. Uh, Bronwyn, you, you gave Bronwyn some new information. She said she didn't know she could get their own, her own cards and that, that she could do it herself. She's really excited about that. So thank you for passing that along yeah. to her. Yeah, yeah. And Colleen says she has a card app. She like she thinks that Wisdom Oracle is really good. I don't know if you're familiar with that one. Yeah, that's a, that's another Colette Baron Reed mm-hmm. um, deck. All of her all of hers are good. There's a bunch of them. Yeah. Okay. And I'm sorry, did I interrupt you, Carlos? I think you were starting to talk, but I I kind of jumped in there. Oh no no no! <laughs> I was okay. agreeing with uh, taking in what Linda was saying. Oh okay okay. Well, that's fine. Um, I do want to get in a little commercial message before we get too far along here because I sometimes forget and then I run out of time. So I'm going to do it now. <laughs> if you're not yet a subscriber of the podcast, please become one. We want more and more subscribers. We want more and more people listening both uh, to the live stream and to the recordings. Uh, and it's really easy to do. We have links in the descriptions wherever we're posting these. In most cases, we have them in there. And if you can't find the links uh, for your particular device in the place where you're seeing this podcast, uh, just go to LOAToday.net. You'll find links there for Android users, for um, Apple users, and just you know, click the right one for you. It'll walk you right through the process. And once you're a subscriber, make sure that you're sharing on social media. Um, I, I did a shout-out this morning, but I'm going to do it again because Nasha is our home run hitter when it comes to sharing on social media. She is promoting the heck out of us, and I want to thank her, even though she <laughs> couldn't be here for today's 
uh, live stream. I want to thank her because she's been really in our corner. But we want more and more people to do that. So please be sharing the fact every time that you're listening to one of our live streams or to one of our recordings uh, that you shared or, or that you listened rather. Because that's how other people find out about it. That's how the law of attraction, you, you actually are part of what the law of attraction does. You are part of how the law of attraction delivers uh, the daily dose of happy to everyone um, in your circle and outside of your circles. So subscribe and share, and that's the message for today. Uh, you know what? Can I, can I share something? Yeah, sure. Because it, it totally feeds to this whole audience, this law of attraction audience. Mm-hmm. Um, I just took part in some... Um, this, it's called Practical Manifestor, where they all about 17 different coaches and healers came together to talk about how you can implement what we teach into your everyday life. You can still get in on it. So I'm going to give you the website if that's okay. So you, sure. my, my interview was today, um, was released today. Anyway, it's, pra- it's practicalmanifestor.com slash Linda. And you can get access to all of these interviews. I think there's still some more coming up. But I'm, I'm listening to them, you know, because I don't know a lot of these other people who have contributed to it. And, uh, and I love what everybody's sharing. It's really, really good stuff. So I just wanted to share I'll, that. I'll punch that into the, uh, into the chat so people can pick it up. Okay. Hopefully it gets in there. Oh, it left off the last part. Let me try that again. Well, while you're doing that, there we go. something popped into my head. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Talking about holidays, um, something that I, I told, I've told you guys in the past that I struggle with, and I was thinking about who's the most stressed people during the holidays, and it's usually the moms or, or the, the hosts, right? Whoever happens right. to be hosting. Right? That could be a dad, but for the most part, it's moms and aunts and those, those people. Um, ask for help. You know, that's something that, again, I, I struggle with, and it's like, man... Um, and I think about why, you know, they're so stressed out. It's like, cause they're trying to do everything for everybody. Um, and I know that it's, it's a time where control, you want, you want to have, you know, control over everything, but kind of, you know, to all the, the moms or the hosts out there that are, you know, taking on a lot, um, you compound that expectation and then that, you know, uh, leads to, to more, more stress. So, um, before it kind of gets, it starts hitting the fan, it's okay to ask for help and just kind of here to remind you of that. And that I'm sure that it'll kind of ease your burden a little bit and you'll be able to have a, a, a better time during the holidays or at least uh, during, you know, family time. <laughs> and that's perfect, Carlos, because those are the very same people who are always giving, giving, giving and don't allow themselves mm. to receive. Yes. Yeah, yes, exactly. you bring up a really... So, so actually, it'd be very healing for you to do exactly what Carlos just told you. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that in. Just yeah. Let, yeah, let people help you. They want to. They're, they're, you know, if they're coming over and like, the people, people want to give, especially during the holidays. Like, let them give. Let them give you that gift of, uh, of some help around the house or around the kitchen or, uh, around the grill, whatever it is. Again, it's not always moms, but just in my experience. So that's, you know, kind of what I was saying. So, but dads too, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> for you guys to ask for help also. I, I'd even add to that. Um, you, you're right. Most people do want to help, or at least a lot of people want to help during the holidays. Um, and it's always good to ask. But what I would recommend is make a particular suggestion of how to how you can help. Like if you can see you 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 see what's going on and there's yeah. X thing over here, you're just kind of like jumping out, it's standing out like a sore thumb. Hey, can, can I take care of that for you? You know, so you still give them the option, but now they're not having to figure out what it is that you're going to do to help them out because that right. that alone just takes some of the load off. Now they don't have to figure that part out. Right. Yep. So it works both ways, and that's the nice thing when you have people on both sides doing what they can to to focus on both accepting and giving, it makes the energy flow so much easier. Yeah. That's it. Right there. Uh, we got a few minutes left. I, let's see. Do we have any questions that have come in? We've had more people coming into the group. Um, Jeffrey came in saying uh, he's been baking. Oh, good for you. I trust everyone is smiling through these days. Yeah, there's a lot of smiling going on here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No other requests for cards. I think I think we satisfied all the card readers. That's good. Um, good. Let's yeah. see. So we got a few minutes left. What do we do with our last few minutes? Um, we have uh, 
be happy. We should play well, the music your... and start dancing. <laughs> what are your plans? What are your plans for the, the holidays, Walt? Okay. Mine? Oh, uh, well, yeah. Louise yeah. and I will be uh, will be driving from Connecticut to Rhode Island, where her family is located, uh, to spend Christmas Eve with her brother, sister-in-law, nephews, and uh, then Christmas Day, we're, we're actually going to stay overnight, and to Christmas Day, we're going to go visit some friends of hers, um, who she has known since she was in junior high school. So these are long-term oh, friends, wow. yeah. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be a, a fun time. We we go down for Christmas Eve because Christmas Day at uh, Paul and Joyce's house is insane because Joyce has a really large family, so the whole house just fills up, you know, and it gets a little bit crazy. And you know, <laughs> Christmas Eve we can actually visit with the boys. We can visit with Paul and Joyce. You know, it's a nice quieter atmosphere and so forth. So that's right. why we go on Christmas Eve. But yeah, how about you guys? What are you up to? What about you? Yeah, what about you, Linda? What are you, what are you getting into? Uh, well, Christmas Eve is, I have a big Italian family, so Christmas Eve is the time when a lot of us come together, right? And everybody mm-hmm. contributes, so everybody's helping each other. Nobody has, like, the burden of doing it all by themselves. Um, but then Christmas Day is just quiet, just me and my immediate family going over to my brother's house and, uh, you know, chilling on that day. Yeah. yeah. How about you, well, Carlos? Course. Uh, I'll be staying in town. Um, I wanted to go out to Miami to visit my, my folks. Um, but just, I, you know, a lot of stuff going on right now and I'm going to be moving, uh, right in that, this time frame, uh, which isn't the best time to move, but, uh, you know, it is what it is and that's kind of how things have shaped out, but it's good. It's a good, every, you know, everything that, uh, has been happening up until this move has, has been really great. So, uh, yeah, I'll be hanging out with, uh, um, a lifelong friend of mine, uh, JJ and his family, who's, who's my second family. And they, they, they're here in, uh, in California. So kind of go over for the, for the day. Um, you know, have a good, nice Christmas, uh, dinner and kind of take it easy. <laughs> so you're, t- you're totally living the shifting from the old to the new. You're living from, yeah, you're living I mean, from one place to the other. Yeah. Yeah. I, I noticed something though, like I, I had taken a personality test a long time ago, uh, that I kind of rediscovered and it kind of had like, uh, this is because it's just a kind of built into me is I'm, I'm constantly trying to discover the world through experiencing and, 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 and you know, intuition and intuitively kind of going through stuff. So I, as I look back at my life, I, I'm constantly in flux. Like every year or so, it seems like I'm, brand new, completely different from the the year before. <laughs> but that's how, you know, that's how I like to live my life. And that's how I learned so much, you know, trying to find that meaning. Um, and I just, yeah, every year I feel like I get closer and closer to uh, the, you know, finding it. So it's, uh, yeah. It's or you're just expanding into more and more and more. Of yeah, more. I mean, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which that doesn't ever end. We're always going to be expanding, right? Yeah, no, it's true. But yeah, as, I, mean, I kind of see that as as that that's who I am. So I don't fight it anymore. I kind of just go out and find that new stuff. And then, last but not least, before we uh, close it up for the day, Linda, could you tell people how they can reach out to you if they want coaching services? Because I, I realize lately I haven't been giving you that opportunity, and that's important. You're you're a good life coach. You're a good energy coach. And for somebody who wants to reach out, how do they reach you? Yeah, just go to my website, Love My Life dot coach it's got to be dot coach i'm not a dot com okay um and then yeah there's you know you can tap on any number of ways to connect with me there very good all right well merry christmas and happy new year to everybody and uh, we hope that your 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 what's the uh the line may all your christmases be bright we hope that your christmas is bright as well <laughs> and uh yeah. Car- carlos and, and linda have a wonderful weekend and uh, we'll, we'll talk to you guys next week of course yeah yeah. All right. And yeah, then, we'll be we'll be able to really close out the year. And well, come that, into absolutely. The new year next week. That's what we're yeah. going to be doing. Yeah. So we want to <laughs> in for that. All right, and we hope that we'll see you all as well next time here on LOA today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye.